So when I was 15 years old, I was a busboy in a dinner house, a restaurant, and um, there was a gentleman there who was the program manager of the space shuttle program, Ed Smith, and, and he and I became friends. He was learning to fly and I was learning to fly. Ultimately, he offered me a job. I said, well, what do you do there? And he says, well, we're building the space shuttle. Said, does it pay more than $2.25 an hour? He said, yeah, it probably does. So I was at the space shuttle program, maybe 10 years at the time. The Northrop had bought the Ford plant in Pico Rivera to, to do work. And at the time, nobody knew what it is we were doing. So they went after Ed. They got Ed to come to Northrop. And as soon as he got there and saw what was going on, he said, Chris, you need to come over. And I said, you're asking me to go into the unknown. And he says, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. So I quit my job and I signed on at Northrop. I went, and there was a wooden mock-up of the B-2 bomber. And I saw her and I thought, oh my God, she's so beautiful. And she exuded power. She just, you just look at her and you knew, game changer. The basic B-2 design was known and understood by the time I got there. There was a lot of work to do, but the concept was there. And the Air Force needed us to make the airplane as stealthy as humanly possible in a broad range of frequency. The folklore was that the government knew that we could not achieve those levels, but they wanted us to try as hard as we could and do the absolute best that we could because it was critical to the nation. And as it turns out, in 1999, when the B-2 made its combat debut, those pilots came back, got out of the airplane and said, this is a great jet. Redemption. So throughout my career, I've been presented with lots of different technical problems. And some are small and some are huge. And some, you have no idea how big they are. So when you're faced with complex problems like that, best approach is to get the smartest people around all of the pieces and have them look at the problem as a set. I found that was something that I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed bringing diverse groups of people together and um, the people become family. So a lot of the procedures didn't exist. We had to create them. There were data systems, the CAD system, the 3D modeling system that we created. What, what that told me is that the B2 was a learning ground uh, to tackle these monumental problems and, and with a group of people and you're learning, you're doing things nobody's ever done before. And it makes you feel good inside that you work alongside of people that are that committed to the mission.